Well, I'm not really sure where I am, but it looks like thankfully the wind is blowing some clothes over to that tree. And I see a trail up that way. So I'm going to go ahead and get dressed and see where that thing leads. Well, we're in luck. I found some evidence that a horse may have been here. Maybe there's civilization further on down the trail. I'm going to go ahead and continue on and see if I can find anything. Well, I finally found some sort of civilized building. So I'm going to head on in to see if I can find some sort of water. Wow, I never thought I'd find marine animals in such a hostile environment. But I found a tank that is full of econoderms such as this sea star and this sea urchin. Now I'm going to go ahead and throw these back in the tank and highlight some facts on econoderms. Econoderms are a group of animals that are almost exclusively marine. They can be found in a large range of habitats from intertidal zones all the way down to the deepest sea trenches. You can find them crawling in sand, rocks, or amongst the coral reefs. The temperature requirements also change according to species. They can be in the Arctic cold or in the tropical Caribbean sea. They have no brain, no heart, and no eyes and they include a variety of sea stars, sand dollars, sea urchins, and sea cucumbers. Right now we're going to go ahead and dive into the tank behind me so I can highlight a few of these species. The green sea urchin is one of the most widely distributed of all the echinoderms. Its range extends into the Arctic regions of both the Atlantic and the Pacific Oceans. If you are looking for these in the wild, you can find them in rocky inner tidal zones and also in tide pools. This urchin primarily grazes on available seaweeds. They have radial symmetry, and they are relatives of sea stars and sea cucumbers, but the spines have become very large and mobile. Two feet are retained, and along with the spines, are used for locomotion and for respiration. As you see in the video, its two feet can move out away from the body. This allows the urchin to grab debris and substrate that it uses to hide from predators. It is also important for navigating its rocky terrain. In the arm of this sea star, you can see the two feet at work, moving it along the rocky terrain. These sucker-like appendages are extended and retracted by hydraulic pressure in the water vascular system. Two feet are not the only thing strange about these animals. Many sea stars, such as this bat star, have the peculiar ability to feed by turning their stomachs inside out. Bat stars live in the rocky and sandy shores along the Pacific coast from Alaska down to Baja, California. When something edible is detected, the bat star moves in and extends his stomach over the prey. It then secretes digestive juices which liquefy the meal, after which it slurps up the resulting soup. There are about 1,800 species of sea stars that occur in today's oceans. With that vast selection, I only have time to highlight one more species, which is the ochre sea star. This is a common sea star found among the waters of the Pacific Ocean. It can be found in shades of purple, orange, and brown. When submerged in water, the arms are flexible, allowing it to move freely. When exposed to air during low tide, the arms stiffen. This stiffening allows better anchoring on the rocks for protection from air and from predators. Econoderms are a fascinating group of invertebrates. Many, like the sea cucumber, have unique habits to survive. There are actually some sea cucumbers that, when scared, will expel their sticky internal organs to distract the predators. They then move into a hiding spot until what they've lost can regenerate. Well, I'm starting to get a little cold in this tank. So I think it's about time that I get out of here. Well, I put the clothes back where I found them, so I'm going to try to find that portal back in the warmer water. I hope you all find an adventure, and I'll see you next time.